What is good, my golden goblins? Welcome back to your live streaming weekly horror movie podcast. Really scared. My name is Taylor, and as always, to my right, I am joined by the illustrious Goose Breed Love. How you doing, buddy? Doing good. <laughs> Started a gang today. Started a gang, got a little fight, claimed a little bit of turf, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> I, hard I, I uh, declared how much I hate everything. I heard you don't give a shit about anything. No, I don't give a shit about anything. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for watching First School in the chat right off the bat. Thank you so much. And lots of love and creepy vibes right back at you. The feelings are mutual. Thank you so much for watching. First school, favorite goal. Always love to see you. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in, whether it's live or listening after the fact, to another edition of Really Scare in our new 2021 format. I'm having so much fun uh, mixing up the way that we are. And a lot of different movies to talk about this month. It's now the third. We're three for three movies I've not seen prior to this show. Uh, I, I got a, I got a feeling it's the same for you, Connor. Yeah, I've never seen any of these. It's it's funny though because um, the one we're talking about today is actually an Ohio film. You know what? I actually didn't know that. Wow, Dalton really? Dayton. Yeah. Oh, a little Dayton joint. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Putting it on. Putting it on for our home state. Fantastic. Uh, if, if you haven't tuned in to our new 2021 format before, uh, it looks a little different, sounds a little different than what you might be used to here on Really Scared. Every single week, we are joined by a special guest. Uh, could be anybody. Could be filmmakers, artists, writers, YouTubers, podcasters, anything under the sun. And they choose one horror film. And they can come at it from any angle. Their favorite movie, their first horror movie. Uh, whatever. Whatever comes to mind when I say pick a horror movie. That's what we're going to talk about. And uh, this week we're going to be talking to director Jacob Horn, who picked one of his favorite B movies, uh, the exploitation legend Dead Beat at Dawn. Again, I had not seen this prior. I wasn't even familiar with uh, Jim Van Beber uh, prior to this. Well, so this has been a revelation, a lesson learned uh, this week. I'm very excited to talk about this movie. Yeah, um, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm. I'm this movie we'll get into it but i'm so excited to talk about this movie <laughs> i'm excited for you because the last two movies you know we've come into this you kind of entered and been like you know i'm not sure how i feel about them or what i feel about them i'm not sure i have much to say and like you find your way along the episode but this one you're coming in off guns the rip, off the rip like 10 minutes in i was like i fucking love this <laughs> oh, fantastic. I'm excited for you. Um, real quick, before we bring Jacob in here, we talk about the film. You know we got to do the regular haunted housekeeping, so to speak. Uh, again, if you're you're watching somehow, some way, but if you're uh, listening after the fact, be sure to subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch. You'll be able to subscribe on Twitch before long. Uh, like on Facebook. We're only streaming every single week to all those platforms. Not just this show specifically, but all the great programs we got here on Who Are They Real Entertainment. Uh, so be sure to stay up to date in that way. Um, if you listen to us, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, all the greats. Be sure you follow or like or whatever the hell you do on that respective service. And uh, if you're feeling generous, leave a little cute little review. A little, leave a couple stars or hearts, whatever they offer on that platform. Just leave a little cute <laughs> review. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, helps us out. Helps us build the platform. So we yeah, can, make uh, it cute. Make a little cutie one, though. Okay? Nothing too weird. Just make a little cutie. And then, of course, always, always, one of the number one ways to support Really Scared is, of course, to head on over to WretchedApparel.com, our wonderful, wonderful sponsor. You can see we're both wearing our Wretched Apparel, and that's, uh, that's, not, a, that's not a bit. Didn't plan that. Uh, didn't rehearse that. We just both love wearing this um, wretchedapparel.com great merchandise apparel mm. the drawstrings are high quality uh, just they make great clothing with uh, original horror movie inspired artwork and of course the best way to support us is when you make that purchase use promo code really scared all one word just like it's spelled for the show r-e-e-l-y-s-c-a-r-e-d uh, not only does it help us out you get 10% off so you get a little, little, little bit of change Little a couple, couple coins to rub together and get yourself something nice for the weekend. So there you go. You get some sweet new clothes. You support one of your favorite shows, and you help out a great new small business. So ratchetapparel.com, promo code really scared. Get yours now. Get it while it is hot. Um, 
Oh, what do you know? First school's wearing her wretched hoodie too. No, you know, if you look, it. It, it's haunted. She's keeping an eye on it. If you sure look really close, shit. If, if you kind of squint your peepers, you can even see first school's wearing her wretched apparel hoodie in the profile picture on Twitch. If you squint real close, that's not great for the audio listeners. You have to tune in live to get bits like that. Uh, love to see it. Wretchedpearl.com, promo code really scared. Check it out. You won't be disappointed. Oh, man. Goose! Let's say we get this show on the road. What do you think? Let's do it. All right. Let's bring our special guest in here. Very excited to talk to him. Very excited to talk about this film. The director of new short film, Neutrals, Jacob Horn! Woo-hoo! Hello. Thank you. Thank you. This wonderful applause is overwhelming. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I guess a little bit of intro. I'm Jacob Horn. I'm a uh, Michigan-based filmmaker. And yeah, I have a short film that came out called Neutrals, if you want to follow it. Uh, it's at Neutrals Film on Instagram and Facebook. And it's very similar to Deadbeat at Dawn. Ironically, I saw Deadbeat at Dawn after making Neutrals, about a full six oh. months after, which is, you know, it was very interesting how that worked out. But yeah, uh, check out Neutrals to all the listeners. It's uh, punk dark comedy, rock and roll type film. And uh, we've been doing real good with festivals. We've been in uh, 24. We've won a bunch of uh, accolades and stuff. So yeah, there's a little bit of uh, credit to let you guys <laughs> pick it out. So he, he excited to be on, guys. Thank you. We're very yeah. excited to have you. Um, we and I, and I did have the pleasure of checking out Neutrals. Got the uh, the, the Sclusi link. Got to check it out. Mm-hmm. I love uh, I love kind of the the scummy punk rock flavor to it. It's like yeah. exactly the kind of film I'd I'd want to see. Like gr- growing up, so to speak, it just took me back to like mm-hmm. high school, being in bands, going to shows, like that whole subculture and scene, uh, while also being paired as like a a frantic kind of revenge. Not not quite revenge, but 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 in that vein, you know. It's like. Uh, uh, I, it's like a chase movie in the sense where the yeah. entire time they're just being continually pursued by something, you know, yes. and it, it just, the the goal of it was to make it feel like two hours and 15 minutes, kind of an inverse of the, oh, that two hour movie was so, you know, high stakes. It felt 15 minutes, the inverse, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. And I, I dug it. It's, it's, once it picks up, it really doesn't stop, which is, I think, the way a lot of short films should be. I don't know, short films, it, It's I, at least in my experience, my, my very limited experience, uh, mm-hmm. Goose and I here made a short film a couple of years back. Uh, it, it can be tough, though, to um, especially when you do a longer one, You know, if you're not just going mm-hmm. sticking in that three to five minute runtime. Uh, it can really be hard to keep something a little bit longer engaging. Uh, it's mm-hmm. definitely a challenge, and I think neutrals certainly does. It doesn't, doesn't slow down. You know, it doesn't lose steam. Yeah, uh, we- De- kept trying to throw a- shit at them. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Definitely a fun film. And you mm-hmm. already got a new follower over on, on Instagram, I believe, checking out Neutral's film. Oh, so, thank you. Uh, fantastic. Uh, and can't wait for more people to be able to see that, whether in these, these festivals. Mm-hmm. I imagine most of them are, at least in respect to this year, probably virtual festivals. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them, even the ones that were physical, kind of took a shift to virtual. And there were a, a few that had done that. And, you know, I totally understand it why it had to happen and even then it enabled you know there's some gives and some takes because uh one thing that's interesting is there were a lot of festivals that were out of state i'm in michigan so you know not too many around here there are decent amount but uh before it'd be like i'd just have no contact with them i'd maybe get an email back and forth or something but now they're all switching to they'll do a zoom q a or they'll Mm. you know do like live viewing so i can interact with the people that run the festival, the people that vote, I can interact with the audience a bit more. So, you know, there's not being able to see it on like a big screen kind of is a bummer, but at the same time, there's a bit of a, a takeaway of like that extra level of interactiveness that I can have with people states away. So. Right. It, it enable, ideally, it sounds like more people actually see it in the long run, even in, if in you lose kind of that yeah. in the room thing. But but yeah, mm-hmm. you can you can reach people in different I, I don't know you'd say maybe markets or demographics, just people in different areas around the country. Um, the, so you have you have ones that you can promote right now where people can yeah I would say fest? the the closest one that is going to get like a free virtual screening is the Green Bay Film Festival. If you just go greenbayfilmfestival.com or I think it's you know if you just Google Green Bay Film Festival to pop up. 
we are going to be screening there for free all in February. And it's, uh, right. it's not going to be, I think it's like February, March, April, a couple of months and you don't have to pay. So that's good. And it, it's going to be up for a few months. So yeah, Green Bay Film Festival, that's not going to be till February. But if you follow the neutrals stuff, there'll be thousands of updates about it over the next coming weeks. So you won't Perfect. forget. I won't let you forget. Yeah. Love it. Check it out next month for free. You got no excuse. What else you got None. going on? Sit down and check out Neutrals. Check out some great new independent films. Stream it for free. That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I heard it in there, which I, I'm interested in. So I, I was under the impression, just kind of an assumption I made, that this has maybe been a film that you've been a fan of for a while, but it sounds like it was more of a uh, deadbeat at dawn is more of a recent discovery. Is that true? It It is. But the reason why I did pick it is because it does have a few Neutrals ties in the sense of... Uh, Ryan Ogwin, who is Wes, the villain in Neutrals, Deadbeat at Dawn was something he had recommended. And, okay. you know, um, Ryan did pass away. So it's like I wanted to talk about something that has a little bit of a, a merit to it out for me, you know, outside of it just having like connections to new, like, like thematic connections to Neutrals. There's also that real world, like I discovered it because of making this movie. You know, if I didn't make sure. this movie, I wouldn't have had that conversation. So, so it's got, got kind of a, a sentimental connection to such a crazy movie. It does. So does, uh, there's two um, Duke Mitchell films, Gone with the Pope and Massacre Mafia style. Those are, are the same reason, because they're like these very wacky, out there exploitation movies. But yeah, Ryan recommended them. So now they have like a extra bit of sentimentality. Yeah. Would you would you say generally speaking is that something you particularly enjoy like the B movies exploitation movies and sort of low budget just just violent gross weird oh yeah <laughs> definitely I mean I like you know all types of movies as you can see my Marvel Funko Pops wrong side so you can see my Marvel <laughs> Funko Pops right there you know I am a, a victim to the mainstream media but yeah I love <laughs> B movies and exploitation movies just as much and I mean truthfully a little bit more. Cause I think the greatest films are independent movies. Cause if you don't have much backing you, you know, there's, it means that much more if you're able to make something stellar. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's good. No to disrespect have. against studio pictures, of course, but yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think it's a good thing to have kind of a wide range of interest and potential inspiration and kind of a, mm. kind of a broad palette, being able to appreciate something from the $500 million studio yeah massive blockbusters or something like this, which was probably made for like $30 and a pack of cigarettes, you know? <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe oh, man. Much. Deadbeat at Dawn. So I, I would love to just kind of hear, you know, we, I, I, I can see how you came to this film, but I'd love to hear just kind of what, what about it appeals to you? What, what do you like about Deadbeat at Dawn that makes, makes you really say in terms of the film's content, like this is one I'd like to discuss. I wanted to discuss it because it was just it I would probably say it's probably one of the dirtiest movies I've ever seen just yeah. by each frame is very disgusting and it was just that was kind of why I wanted to to talk about it because I was like okay if I'm gonna make these guys watch a movie they're gonna watch something gross <laughs> and, it, and it's and it's morally gross too because yeah. like there's the rich guy who buys the cocaine off goose then Goose is like, what are you going to do with it? He's like, I'll sell it to kids. I don't give a fuck. So it's like, even morally, the movie is just corrupt. Yeah. 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 It's got a, it's got like a tainted soul. Like every frame makes you want to wash your hands. And yeah. Just, yeah. You, know, you can just imagine like, like mm -hmm. trying, like you walk through any one of these rooms, just be like, oh my God, I don't want to talk to these <laughs> yeah. guys. Like, get me the fuck out of here right away. I, I, I that scene's great that you mentioned, by the way, the, the drug deal in the alleyway. Like there's mm -hmm. no, no semblance of like any subtlety in this movie. Like any, any times it, anytime it makes a choice, it makes that choice to like the nth degree. Like it's mm -hmm. cranking it to 11 every time. That's so if you ask a guy. It's so just insane. Every <laughs> yeah. Every moment of the movie is just insane. Yeah, love if, it. If you ask a if you ask a guy what's he gonna do with those drugs right away, he's gonna say, "I'll sell them to fucking kids." Like, just yeah. takes it to the worst possible like extent of where it can go every single <laughs> time. Which I think, I think rules. Um, it is oh, it is totally. a trip. Totally. <laughs> I think there's a, a there's some subtleties hidden in there, just in mm -hmm. the sense of like 
I think it just comes down to more like uh, Goose. Because one thing I really enjoyed is even though this movie is dirty and disgusting and, you know, a filthy mess, Goose's dilemma is super fucked up. Like, yeah. his girlfriend dies, and also the way she gets killed is intense. And then I love when he has to take the body to get squashed. Because in most action movies, they're just like, oh, no, my loved one is dead. The body just disappears. But in this, it's like, he's got to get rid of it. And it's as horrifically violent and real as it would have to be. Like you said, everything's up. Just gets taken to the nth degree. But like, gotta throw her in the trash yeah. compactor. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I, as somebody who watches a lot of horror films and genre films, and, mm. and I, we've, I love that I keep kind of saying these things where you think you kind of seen it as 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 deep as the rabbit hole can go. Mm -hmm. But it's like. I can't find myself going like, man, who thinks of that shit? You know, like yeah. <laughs> he, he comes up to his, his girlfriend who's been murdered. And minutes later, he's like, well, got to toss her in the trash compactor <laughs> to, to, to cover up the trail. Like, what? Yeah. Who would ever think of that? Um, it, have you yeah. seen so the uh, Jim Van Beber, who wrote and directed mm -hmm. this film and also played Goose. I didn't realize those were all one and the same until like 30 minutes before we went live. Yeah. Um, have you seen any of his other work? I I've, I've, I obviously. I have not. They're a bit harder to find uh, from what I can gather. I haven't been able mm -hmm. to find. Uh, the, the big one is he made a uh, Manson movie in like 97. Yeah. And that's that one's kind of hard to find. That's one that I want to see next. I haven't been able to find it available anywhere. And the Blu-ray of it is like $70. Jesus. So it's like, okay, oh, physical whatever. copy isn't happening anytime soon. Right, that's, right. That's how I, you know, watch most of my stuff. Yeah, it's like Joe's apartment. Can't find a cheap Joe's uh, apartment. Physical, can't find a, a cheap physical copy of that. That shit's like fifty bucks for a DVD. Oh, really? Though, isn't that the MTV one with the cockroaches? Yeah, it's yeah. the first MTV film. It's the physical copies are so expensive. It's funny. Sometimes it's like the uh, the the Alex Winters freaked. That one will go for like one hundred thirty bucks now. Yeah, like it's crazy. Yeah. yeah, you you gotta wait for Arrow or Vinegar Syndrome or somebody to pick these weird mm -hmm. gems up and release them. Which Debbie, I, I know, does have that a couple a year ago or a couple years ago got the Arrow re release. <laughs> Boom, yeah. there it is. Got a, it's I think it's 2018. Yeah, 2018. They gave it an Arrow release. So, which is great because this movie could have been seen by nobody. You know, it could have yeah. just been something in Van Beber's basement, but it managed to get yeah, out. Yeah, it was uh, stuck. Um... And this like weird contract where it only screened at a Dayton drive-in. Yeah. Really? That's so fun. Yeah. And then like years um, in this weird contract, you finally got out of it. And then Arrow picked it up. Um, and God bless like, it. When it was rediscovered and kind of more people fell in love with it. Because it was only screening at this Dayton drive-in for like 30 years. Really? I, I, that, what a contract. What a hell of a deal to get. Just yeah. screening and dating all day. I know the film was banned in the UK for, I think, like a decade, something crazy like that, too. 30 years. Uh, it just oh, wow. when it got released on Arrow. That's when it was unbanned in the UK. Really? So 30 years it was banned. Was it part Jeez. of like that video nasties they had? Yeah. Where they were like just banning anything? Yep. Okay. That makes sense. You don't want the kids to see this one. You really no. don't. No. <laughs> you really don't. Fair enough. Um, and apparently, I guess, got all spooky ghosts in the chat. Um, Bever shorts are on YouTube. Okay, I had not seen that. I have to check them out. Yeah, yeah I was trying to I was trying to find, because there's not like a ton, ton of information on him on the internet that I could at least come across. Hmm. They're just kind of little scraps here and there. I know they made a full-on documentary about him a couple of years ago. Hmm. Um, I was going to, I just, I just learned about, I think it's Diary of a Deadbeat, I think is the name of it. Mm. I think like 2015, they put out a documentary um, following his, like what he's doing now. And also I, I think he's trying to make, a, or he's been trying to make a film for the last couple of years. Um, that sounds about so, right. It seems to take him a while to make a movie. Yeah. This Deadbeat one took four years. Four, four years. Yeah. 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 Damn. A labor of love. Compassion. Oh yeah. It was a, he quit film school to make it. He took his film school money, made a film. Right, yeah, he, he, he took out a loan and, and made and made this instead of go to school. If I if I yeah. remember correctly, what a yeah. hero! I love it. 
I love it. All right, let, let's dive a little into this one. So if yeah. you haven't seen Deadbeat at Dawn, and, and it's certainly possible that you haven't, although it's pretty easy to watch digitally now, mm -hmm. uh, which is good to see. It's on Shudder, so if you got a Shudder, and if you're listening to this show, you probably do have a Shudder. Uh, you can catch it on there. And if you don't, you can catch it on Tubi uh, for free, which is great. I like gotta I gotta figure out Tubi because it seems like a really solid service. It's like yeah, there's there's these crazy, there. yeah, they just have these movies just straight up. You don't have to I don't even think you have to sign up if nope. I if I nope. wow, that's wild. Um so you if you want to check out a few, Deadbeat, you know, a few ad breaks, but that's about it. Some movies need an ad break like this. Perhaps you just need a little bit of a, a moment to get up and stretch your legs. And <laughs> it's kind of decompress, put on some deodorant, maybe or something like that. Um, yeah. 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 Wash your hands a couple times. Uh, so the movie is pretty easy to watch digitally. If you haven't seen it before, if you haven't seen it before the setup, it, it is really one of those where it's all about the execution because the setup is kind mm -hmm. of simple. Um, you know, a goose, the leader of a street king, which by the, I mean, all right, I'll, I'll just say it right now. Goose is an amazing name for a street king oh, or for a, yeah. a king leader or a criminal. Like that's your pseudonym is goose. That like that to me, that's that carries a lot of confidence with it because goose is not a name. Anybody's going to inherently take serious, but no. you're going to make them take it seriously. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nothing man. scary about a goose. I mean, <laughs> I've been, you know, I was feeding geese once as a kid. They get nasty, so maybe. Yeah, they hit. That's true. You run out That's of bread, true. and they turn on you. That's true, and they really don't like when you come into their territory. That's when they start getting a little volatile. So oh. maybe there's, maybe it's I wonder if there's a bit there's more going on. It's wordplay. <laughs> yeah. Every, every detail has purpose in this film. It was, it was all accounted for. <laughs> the leader of the Ravens is a yes. uh, street street gang whose rivals are shoot what are the what's the other gang called spiders right the spiders yeah i think so i think it's spy oh uh, let's see yeah the spiders yeah, yeah. the spiders yeah. okay um and a and a never ending turf war i guess for Dayton Ohio uh, against the spiders and goose has a girlfriend she wants him to get out of the game she's got kind of this metaphysical thing going on Mm -hmm. um she she's disappointed in him and the treachery his lifestyle brings on them all the time and convinces him to get out get out of the gang goose and you and i will go off and live happily ever after and, and he does and the gangs don't like you, you can't get out you can't get out of that lifestyle nope. it's gonna pull you right back in um and the spiders the spiders come after him since he's no longer he's no longer in the rival gang they come after him. He doesn't have the security or the support of the Ravens, and they kill his girlfriend, which sends him on a downward spiral and eventually landing in a quest for revenge. That's kind of the, again, kind of a basic setup. You know, guy's girlfriend gets killed. He wants revenge. There's a lot of movies like that. Yeah. But it that it exists in this weird nightmarish hellscape, <laughs> this, this crazy 80s exploitation version of like rural Ohio <laughs> I think sets it apart and then it does have this really kind of horror flavor to it some I know people would probably you know we're a horror show people would probably come to this and think like oh, this doesn't seem, really seem like a horror movie but it, it kind of is in the execution of it especially towards the yeah. end yep uh, when you I start did want getting, to uh, bring yeah. that up yeah because the the I, I would say there's a lot of horror elements not enough to you know wouldn't brand this a full-on horror but if you were to list the genres, it'd be like three or four. And it, I think it's down to the ending with uh, that dream sequence. That gets pretty horrifying in the cemetery. And just yeah, so yeah. violent. It's like, what did they use for that brain? Watching it again <laughs> this time, I was like, what fucking cow brain, pig brain, something they got from the yeah. butcher shop. It looks so nasty. And then also, I think there's just like the personal horror that like putting yourself into that mindset of what if you do find your loved one like brutally murdered like that and i like that yeah. deadbeat spends like 30 minutes of just goose being a complete wreck about it because in, yeah. in action movies normally it's oh my girlfriend's killed time to kill these guys he spends like weeks at a time just broke drunk fighting with his dad like you know yeah. not 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 nothing arnold schwarzenegger would do on a revenge mm. mission you no. know <laughs> no um it's it's true, yeah. He 
when he finds her dead, you know, he, he throws her in a trash compactor and then just wanders <laughs> around for days and some yeah. sort of insane depression bender running into like the worst people you've ever met mm-hmm. every single day. <laughs> yeah, it, the way that it just kind of like sits around and kind of uh, settles in with his like his his contempt and his hatred and his self loathing and he definitely definitely a flawed protagonist not a not a traditional hero oh, yeah. by any means. Um, I mean, even the the coke selling scene that's right after he promises his girl he's done. <laughs> he's like, I'm done. I'm not doing that shit no more. Yeah, and in I mean, considering that yes, she is murdered by his rival gang members, but essentially her dying wish is for goose to stop being in the life of crime and of course he, he just gets suckered right back into it and keeps going so there, there's something there with her insistence that he, you know uh, he's just a fuck up you know he's a deadbeat he does get yeah. right back into that lifestyle even after she's dead does not mm-hmm. does not really have the nuance or self-awareness to go like would it be better to honor her wishes by just skipping town and not engaging with us anymore he's like nah i'm gonna I'm gonna rip a man's throat out with my bare yeah. hands. That's it's, the life I want to lead. There, there is an irony in that that he does just go into it more than ever, and he just goes on a essentially a murder spree by the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's like she would not like that at all. How it's do you funny. guys like the uh, the violence in this movie? Because my God, uh, it, it starts out really violent. I mean, yeah. you have that. I mean, it starts out with yeah, the girlfriend and her like. Um, witchcraft mm-hmm. um, but then it goes into this giant brawl in a cemetery <laughs> i love no, this so good um i i the love that they're driving their jock straps over their jeans yeah that was something i noticed this viewing i was like wait yeah they're all wearing <laughs> that's, jock that's straps a conscious design jeans. design decision uh, <laughs> it's it's so good I, I was just like why are they all wearing uh, jock straps over their jeans it's great it's like it's it's like they were watching um uh the warriors and yeah they were like well they already did baseball clowns what can we do let's put jock straps <laughs> over your jeans it's it's good it'll it's perfect yeah it, the violence it does in definitely... that, yeah. yeah go ahead sorry i was just gonna say in that in that opening you do get a sense of like the violence of it because it, it really um puts you in the center of it when they start slashing at each other yeah, yeah I, again i'm gonna probably sound like a broken record like unlike other action movies where you get slashed and then you move on these guys start withering on the ground and they're like fucking with their hand because it's bleeding and it's like you know i cut myself once accidentally in the summer i would not want to have someone intentionally do that to me yeah. you know it takes you out of it for a second yeah. so i just and then the whole movie's got that horrible scar on his face. So it's just right. like it it it's over the top, but to a to a point, you in know. The, the, the reaction is still in this a lot scene, more real. In the dialogue mm-hmm. in the scene, it, how much of it do you think was ad libbed? How much do you think is like actually in the script? Because there's one line that is just so fucking good where I was like, I don't know how much of this is like improvised and how much of it is actually like in the script i would feel like like there just have to be improvisation i mean i guarantee these guys half the time were actually getting drunk and or high yeah i bet it, yeah. i bet it wasn't being fake so who knows after shooting for a bit you might just start popping off nasty shit on your own yeah we got <laughs> we got a clip it's very short yeah like, this is one of my favorite lines in the movie <laughs> Your noise. <laughs> you like that one? Huh? <laughs> that's that's the moment yeah. where I was like, "Oh, I love this movie." <laughs> <laughs> I love this movie's just interpretation of gangs and like how yeah. they function and what they want and what they look like. Because no, I agree. There's definitely a parallel to draw between this and the Warriors. Mm-hmm. And Connor, you and I talked about it before. We're like. I love the idea of a gang is like everybody has a costume, like they have kind of a quaint name, you know, it's not some like deep visceral uh, meeting or anything like that. It's just like, we're called the spiders. <laughs> we wear jock straps outside our pants. Yeah, and like we wear someone masks. like the, like Danny probably just 
put a jock strap over his jeans and he was like, you all have to do it now too. We're the spiders. <laughs> we're a uniformed. This is our thing. Know, this Just is go with our it. thing. Yeah. Put your jock straps on over your jeans. Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> and that they're driving for yeah. it. All, all I can really tell that they want, you know, they're, they're, fighting over turf they want they want territory and i just love mm. that the territory in this scene that they're fighting over is a cemetery it's like once you get it what you're gonna do in there you're just gonna hang out like yeah. what's what, what's the motive i guess we're just making an expansion like take we take it all until you own all of it and your request won't be complete until you, then but you gotta get the cemetery to then get the street next to the cemetery to get the block <laughs> across the street Ooh. you know it's a big yeah. trickle down <laughs> fighting over land in Dayton. I mean, that's the other great thing. I love that you yeah. told me it was in Dayton because that's a really funny place to fight over with, with yeah. knives. It's like, there's other places, guys. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Jim Van Pepper can... didn't live there, so <laughs> so it was Dayton. I, I I love the not only that there's a lot of knives in this, but I also love things like nunchucks showing yeah. up mm -hmm. and the way I, that the act. I wrote yeah. in my notes, like any good independent movie, there is a nunchuck alone training scene. <laughs> yeah. As any good independent movie needs, or B movie needs. Yeah, yeah. but the, the cemetery scene is basically what causes his um his girlfriend to be like, You you need to get you need to get out. You almost yeah, died. He gets cut off. He really bad. did. He got yeah. fucked up. Um and yeah, so that was like the incident that she was like, you got to get out. I can't do oh, let this. Us, let us also not forget the great um, exploding hand in the cemetery. Because that part's Oh, yeah. yeah. When he reaches for the gun yeah. and then he just shoots his hand off and it explodes. That's insane. <laughs> great. Kind of, you know, yeah, it's low budget, but it's a lot of great uh, ways to film the violence. And so even, mm -hmm. even though it is, you know, low budget and it's buckets of fake blood and such, like it really does make you kind of wince to watch it. Uh, and I think part of it, the, the grand scheme of it, like you said, uh, Jacob, where you kind of have to sit in, in, in Goose's, um, his pain and his anxiety following the death of his girlfriend, even just seeing how people react immediately to things like their hands exploding. Like yeah. nobody, nobody comes off as cool or like tough in this. Like the, everybody's the, the just screaming and hand, crying. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. guy who gets his hand blown off, like you see, like three guys have to like drag him away because like yeah. he he's not walking himself after this. So it's yeah. like Jesus, and they just howl. They're just like crying and wailing in pain anytime something happens. They're like, it's just like they're not cool. They're not action here. They're just people. And one guy just got stabbed in the head. <laughs> he's just falling yeah. down crying. Like it, it's a it's a very it's it. The word gritty gets thrown around a lot, I think, in movies these days. But mm. this is truly, if you had to like, yeah. if you had to get a textbook definition of what a gritty movie looks like, Deadbeat at Dawn, because oh, yeah. you know, fuck, you just feel it. You just kind of cringe mm. every time something happens to somebody. Um, but yeah, Connor, you set it up. The, uh, Goose, is, Goose is convinced to leave the life of crime by his girlfriend, correct? Yeah. But he has to do one more, one more sale to get some money to, you know, be comfortable um and, and during that time we're introduced to um what was it bone crusher was that his name oh my god oh, yeah bone crusher and then the other guy um they he both just names that sound like transformers god does, does he have a crazy name the leader i think the leader is just keith isn't it that no right? the leader, leader was just Danny, yeah. yeah oh, but Danny. then you have Bone Crusher and then the guy yes. he's always with. I can't remember his name. That might be Keith. Um, but yeah, they're tasked with um, basically Danny was like um, you're going to kill his girlfriend um, mm -hmm. just to oh. kind of get at him. And um, in that scene where he tells him to kill his girlfriend, uh, doesn't Danny's girlfriend come down the stairs and is like, baby, I'm pregnant, and then he just punches her. Yeah, just punches her. And then the scene ends. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they resolve the issue. And yeah. then she's yeah, not seen again. Yeah. Never comes yeah. back. Yeah. And then every Bone Crusher, I he hates everything. Sure does. Oh yeah. He he spends a lot of time just talking about how much he fucking hates everything and just does not give a shit. Hates oh, all nope. the people. 
all and the people in the world. He he lets he lets uh, uh, he lets his girlfriend know. He lets Goose's girlfriend know right before um, they brutally murder her, just that he hates everything. Um, mm-hmm. And it's a very strange um, line too. Um, I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll play the clip. Let's see if anybody can decipher this for me. I know it wasn't soft, bitter flesh of so beautiful death. I've seen things without eyes. I hate everything. <laughs> He's seen things without eyes. He hates everything. I was so blown away. Like the, the dialogue in this movie just makes me love it even more. Because I have no idea what that means. I couldn't tell you. I love that you picked that out, Connor, because I, I did not hear that when I watched it. I, I just, it just washed over me. I was so mm-hmm. enthralled with what was happening on the screen. I totally missed. Yeah, I, and, th- and that's a great point. Your question earlier of like, how much of this do you think was in a script or were people just winging it? It's like, I don't know where one creates a line. I see things in my eyes because yeah. that, that certainly doesn't come back or how are explained. they correlated? Like why does seeing things without eyes correlate to hating everything? <laughs> he's just, he's it's, been out there. It's the movie's full of those. Like, okay. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Bone uh, Crusher uh, in general is an amazing character. First of all, unlike goose bone crusher's got to put it all up on front street he's got to let you know he's not to be messed around with so his name bone crusher great pick love that uh and he is yeah, his he's really on brand at all times he is just always mm-hmm. kind of staring off into space telling you how much he hates everything like like truly just there's just not much there's not any, nobody really is home up here he's just kind of ready for murder he will tell you at a moment's notice how much he hates everything and how except how much he loves murder yes he loves that's it. the one thing he likes yeah <laughs> murder there's nothing like looking into the eyes of somebody as you murder them it just that and that's that's again that's kind of the level that the dialogue is always on it's just we're always we're up here we're never gonna really bring it yeah. back down and kind of think about it we're just at max capacity every time two characters are talking in this film. Uh, and mm-hmm. that, and that, that's all there really is to Bone Crusher is he just loves to kill, loves to hate. And he's uh, just going on his weird, neurotic rants at all times. Um, so, yeah, he gets tasked once Goose is out of the game. He does that drug deal, which I I do think is such an interesting scene because I expected that to come back around in some way. Like, who are those people? Like they're the, you know, there's the, there's the lowly Dayton gangs who have nunchuck fights in the streets, but like, who are these guys? The, 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 the upper class 1% Dayton drug dealers who like, they don't, they don't trouble themselves. Yeah. Yeah. That guy's not doing karate kicks in somebody's basement. Like he just comes in and I'll, I'll sell the fucking kids. I'll do whatever I want. It's just great. great What's the fucking matter to you? (laughs) <laughs> which is also a hilarious way to get out of the gang life is like well let me go sell a bunch of drugs also my gun he's he hands his gun out so it's like he turns in his drugs and his gun like his mm-hmm. his gang member license has been revoked it's like cops it's turning like, in their badge and gun so <laughs> yeah he's yeah that's the last bit of coke yeah. yeah that's how i read it was like that was the that was like the ceo of gangs that he was meeting in the alley he's like give me your drugs Give me your gun. Here's your severance. Get the fuck out of here. I don't ever want to see you again. 401k. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Set them up. Yeah. Your retirement. Um, yeah. Yeah. Your, your social security. You'll start seeing that <laughs> in a couple of years. <laughs> but you're out of the game, kid. Um, Get off the streets. <laughs> it's, and yeah. it, I mean, it's true. His inability to really. He says he's going to get out of it, but his inability to do so is also what ends up getting his girlfriend killed because while he's doing that, that's when Bone Crusher and friends. Uh, visit her and yep. again again the metaphysical kind of influence on her character not, not expanded on too deeply um she's playing with a ouija board when they come over uh she's locked up she's, she's doing some sort of some sort of loose rendition of perhaps fortune telling or something like that she, and, she asked it if uh goose is gonna die and then if she's yeah. gonna die yeah and, I don't know if that's how Ouija board works, but <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, if we're asking strictly yes and no questions and you ask, am I going to die? I mean, it's definitely going to say yes. You know, it's that's just, 
Ouija boards don't have a lot of room to elaborate, unfortunately. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's going to say yes. Uh, and it's, but it, but it is correct in an immediate way because Bone Crusher and friends break down the door and murder her with golf clubs. Uh, this is a, this is another scene where she's like, Oh my God, you, you don't really see anything. Uh, it's all kind of, yeah. it's like the only scene in which the violence is implied. They kind of yeah. give you yeah. a pass on that. They're like, okay, we're not going to show this innocent woman being brutally murdered with golf clubs. You'll just kind of hear it, but mostly focus in on her assailants and the murders and mm -hmm. bone crusher declaring that it looks like snakes is what he says. Oh, yeah. God. Snakes. God. <laughs> Again, it's and I'm like, was that, a, was that in the script or was that a was that a bone crusher? I, I feel like that had to be in the script because the snakes come back at the end and they have a yeah. bunch of snakes on him. That's true. Yeah. So they it must have back. been a situation of like Van Beber knew someone with snakes and was like, okay, <laughs> getting in the movie somehow. Yeah. You're bright. Yeah. This this kind of this level of filmmaking, you're probably right, is a lot of like, well, I know a guy who can give me this. Mm -hmm. I know a guy who'll let me shoot in the restaurant. Like, I just can't yep. imagine getting, you know, permits and such for this film to. to oh, go like film. half this movie is more than half. I bet the whole movie is stolen as far as like <laughs> permits go. Like there, there oh, probably yeah. wasn't yeah. a single one. <laughs> yeah. I love the idea of like cemetery, like security guard walking up. on Even <laughs> <laughs> if you see the cameras, like good luck trying to decipher that as guys wearing jock straps and, Batman masks or beating yeah. each other with not <laughs> <laughs> That's like, never mind. Yeah. I'm going back to my office. And, I ain't got time for this. And the director's beating him up. So it's not like he's on alert, going to be like, hey, sir. Yeah. No, he's busy, you know, <laughs> fighting also. Yeah, yeah imagine yeah, if you try to I, talk to the guy in charge and he's got blood all over him. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was after he puts his girlfriend in the trash compactor and he's walking drunkly through through Dayton. Um, that's when I was like, oh, this is guerrilla filmmaking because you can mm -hmm. see the people in the background just like looking yeah, at the camera. Like, yeah. <laughs> they're just like, the fuck? Okay. Yeah. This dude's covered in blood and they're just like, <laughs> whoever they're with, they're like slapping them like, do you see this? And then they just look directly, they look at him and then directly into the camera. And I'm just like, oh, this is guerrilla. Just so, another day in Dayton, baby. Yeah, you gotta love it though. There's a there's a real spirit in that. You know? Yeah, and yeah. it's a great point. I'm always fascinated, just generally speaking, by films in which the director is also in the film, starring in the film. I mm -hmm. can't, I can't imagine the challenge of directing a movie, like going in front of the camera, doing your thing, like setting up the shot and then running around and like. Because I bet you got to imagine that's kind of what this was, you know, obviously in a bigger budget oh, yeah. film, you can set up the shot, but you know, you have your team and your crew, like, you can trust that it's going to get filmed correctly and the performance is going to be there, mm -hmm. even though you are in the scene. But like, I can't ima imagine this is like he's throwing it on the tripod or he's, he's throwing the camera over to this guy mm -hmm. and he's going to run over and do his thing. Uh, and obviously, it's in the 80s, so it's not like an easy digital playback or anything. Yeah, there's no monitor. Imagine. Yeah, yeah, I can't imagine the challenge in making a movie like this while also being the star of it. And of course, he was also the writer of it too. So, like a real, oh a real God. passion project. Oh yeah, know? and I mean, he has the most insane stunts in the movie. Part of me thinks that's why uh, he stars in it as well, because I think it was a, a matter of like, I'm the only one who's gonna like run and let the car get this close to me, and I'm the only, gonna be the only one to pulling myself down a giant parking structure and <laughs> dangle out the side of a car. It's like do do flips. Like, yeah, he's doing a lot. Cause when I first saw it at the nunchuck scene, I was like, is this going to be one of those like vanity movies where the guy right. is like, you know, where the guy's like the like, look at movie. Yeah, exactly. Where the guy's like, look how awesome I am. Da, da, da. But at a point <laughs> I was like, no, I guarantee he just did not want to ask anyone else to throw themselves off the, build off the bridge and into the probably nasty radioactive Dayton river water. <laughs> no disrespect to Dayton. I don't know what it's like there, but that did not look like clean water. No, not a no, clean place. no. that's a great point. Yeah. I don't know. There's, there's however, however big of a check you would need to cut to get somebody to do some of these things. He's not cutting that check. 
and he's not oh, taking out that insurance policy on a, another actor yeah. hanging out the driver's side of a car while they drive down an alley, stuff no. like that. That's a great point. There's it had to be him. No, it couldn't have been anybody else. So yeah, it was Van Bever top to bottom. It, it, and it's easy to compare something like this to like you know a Tommy Wiseau who's again the the heart and soul of, mm-hmm. of the room, but the execution is so off. He like doesn't understand how people's minds work whereas this while it is so crazy and so mm-hmm. ramped up i think he i think he is totally tapped into what he's trying to do and it's actually it's working and you know what he's what he's doing is creating this fever dream of a of a rev- disgusting revenge movie but he's totally doing that i felt i felt i was feeling everything that the film wanted me to feel when i was feeling it i was like the film yep. is working <laughs> it's it's succeeding at what it's doing mm-hmm. Um, it, it is incredibly effective. Everything it sets out to do, it does them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and very Board unique. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I the you know his sort of downward spiral moment where he's wandering through the streets and bullying bums into giving him their liquor. <laughs> it's yeah. just all leading up to where he eventually like sort of just runs into his dad. I guess this I guess this is his dad. It sounds like it yeah. is. It is. I uh in rewatching the movie, his dad is brought up earlier before. Okay. Like she she calls him out, his girlfriend is like, You're gonna be a you know, bum druggy like your dad. So it, it is actually okay. his father. Yep. Yeah. It, yeah. There's two scenes in a row when he finds his girlfriend's body and then when he breaks into his dad's house. I realized he never uses a door. He always just goes through a window to enter a building. (laughs) Preferably on a second story so he can climb up the the side of the wall while he's at it. Yeah. Yeah. He can scale a wall and then jump up onto a fire escape. Both both scenes, two scenes in a row, he does it, and I'm just like, there there are doors. (laughs) He's a goose, man. He's gotta fly it right in. Oh, there you the go. That is great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my beer. You drank my last fucking beer. <laughs> yeah, this guy comes in like a tidal wave, dude. It's like, yeah. I, I didn't know. He wanders into like the most disgusting looking house that's ever oh, been Oh, God. Found. I thought it was just an abandoned building. And then, yeah, the dad busts out, super pissed off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he, he's got a great look, too. He's just like jeans, no shirt. Um, carrying a baseball mm-hmm. bat and just it uh, looks like a total lunatic. He's ranting and raving. I agree. I thought he did just kind of stumble into a trap house, but it seems like a guy actually lives here and it's just dirty. Everything's broken. It's like, you can hear the shit crunching under their feet as they walk around. Mm-hmm. Just like wall. random holes in the wall. It's like, mm-hmm. where'd you find this place? Like a guy's, a guy's living here. Is he like paying to live here? Like what's, wh- what is this world? <laughs> Oh, I think he's probably squatting. It's it's probably yeah. some abandoned building he's squatting in. That's what I took it as. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's so gross. And this guy is just he he's he's an enigma. Mm-hmm. Constantly like paranoid rantings about his beer, where is it? He needs money for it. Uh you you're but you you're gonna betray me, you'll turn on me. Like I know all the, the top level them. secrets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah. Uh, and then he sees a rat. <laughs> Like mm-hmm. climb into one of the holes in the walls, and the sound effects, Boing. and the music during this scene is <laughs> insane. It's yeah. like some whimsical, like cartoon music. I, I was <laughs> yeah. so just blown yeah. away by it. I was just like, like "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> like each time his bat hits, there's like a boing sound effect yep. faintly in the background too. So it's like boing, boing. It's like, <laughs> And it, five seconds ago, we just watched a man trash compact his girlfriend. Like, <laughs> uh, I have a clip. Should I play it? I love, I love the clips you go. you've got. Okay, play it. Take my beer. This is my beer, my refrigerator. I don't remember inviting any punk kid in here to drink my beer. That's my last beer. Oh shit! At you. What am I gonna do? You got my last fucking beer. What's the matter with you anyway? Now I ain't got no beer left. That's my last beer. I'm going to buy some more. I don't want to go out on the street. I'm going out on the street, unless I get my gun. I'm going to take my gun with me. 
supposed to deal with you. You can't go out there without protection. You need protection. I'm not protecting myself. Then. Whoa! <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, you can hear yeah. the boing. <laughs> yeah. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to be a fly on the wall in that editing room. Yeah. And they're like, we need something. What is it? <laughs> boing sound effects. Yeah. Finding what's out. What, well, you already got in the library. What can you pull? We've got boings sitting here. We can throw a couple boings in there. Um, otherwise, sure. you got to go film it. got to film something else if you don't want boings. <laughs> What the fuck? I don't know. This picture's locked. We got a schedule to adhere to. Uh, yeah, I, I great um great note for the music, by the way, because the music is so strange. I don't even know what I would compare like for the whole film. I don't even know what I would compare it to. It's just kind of this weird ambient noise. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. You know, I'm not too much of a musician, but I couldn't even begin to like guess what it was made on. You know, like most yeah. of the time it's like I could kind of figure what that instrument is, but it's like, is this some type of synthesizer deal? Is this some, I, I don't know. Like, you know, I think there's one instance of a rock song, but that's it. The rest is that kind yeah. of weird ambient yeah. clicks and clacks. And I don't, yeah. Help yeah, with the mood. It was um, when um, the the rival gang basically takes him in and is like, you're going to work for us now. Mm -hmm. um, because the setup is um, they are going to rob an armored truck. The big heist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're like, you're not le you're, you're back in the game. You're going to help us steal this armored <laughs> truck or we're going to kill you. They literally yank him out like mid suicide attempt. Yeah. Yeah. Where he's just strung out. Cause, cause yeah, he, his dad, his, his dad, you know, takes the beer money, ends up buying heroin, shoots mm -hmm. up, which is also just even in execution of that, a, a really revolting and just, Oh, a, a, oh the, yeah. It's just know, like, the, it's in a bathroom and like blood splurts out on the uh, wall. And he misses the vein and just ugh, very gross. Yeah. It's just, yeah, ugh, you just, you just want to rinse off every, it's, every it's, five it's, minutes. It's his toes too. That's what makes it worse. Oh, yeah. To his toes, which also <laughs> implies that this ain't good anymore. So it's like, Jesus, right. Jesus, right. Dad, Dad's been in it a while. Yeah, and then and then to live up to his girlfriend's prediction, you know, he, well, this isn't working. So he wanders back out into the street for however mm -hmm. long, and again, just running into uh, strange characters. He goes to that bar where he just becomes like, oh, a, yeah. he's just like mm -hmm. harassing a woman again, like not not a guy who. I get you can you can feel bad from the respect that his girlfriend's been murdered, but still not like a not a traditional hero, not a guy that you like oh. aspire to be anything like. He's harassing women. He's, he's getting he's drunk. drunk. Yeah. Eventually, it it does seem they don't go into it too deep, but it seems that he does actually start taking up like narcotics. You get a very quick shot of mm -hmm. him like tying off the arm so he can shoot up, and then he again wanders into an alleyway ready to kill himself. A, a, a bum there is like, whoa, man, what's the cut for? Oh, I'm going to blow my own brains out. He's like, oh, all right, go on then. <laughs> well, you get that quick little cut of him doing it too, which I love that. That I had to rewind it when I first watched it because I was just like, so it's like maybe 24 frames in total, but like yeah. his head splits for that just split second. Little things like that just add a personality. We didn't need to see that horrific violence, but thank you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it, it kind of initially scared the shit out of me because I was like, mm -hmm. you know, within that very brief moment, I had time to think like, oh my God, he's just dead. What's the rest of yeah. this movie? And then before I, I can think about it anymore, we cut back. Yeah. It was just a, mm -hmm. just kind of a hypothetical showing you what he wants to do, but never gets to do because yes, he's approached by his former uh, colleague in the Ravens. So is this... Is I, I keep making I, one of them's Danny and one of them's Keith. I, I can't remember which one is the actual the new leader of the Ravens, the guy who like tells him, you know, you're you can't you're not gonna ever make it out of here. This is never gonna work. You're gonna leave the gangs. And the guy who pulls him back in, it also makes sure to clarify, like, I don't give a shit about you. Uh, you could have died for all I care, but we need you to for the big score, the big job here. Mm. Which I always, which I thought was 
peculiar because I didn't I didn't see why exactly I needed Goose so particularly for the job. Like he doesn't strike you as a criminal mastermind where it's like, all right. He's like, all right, boys, gather around. He like gets the blueprints up. Here, yeah. we got a big job coming up. He's just like another asshole, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess he was the one who lowered himself down and then threw the the star <laughs> thing. So I guess who knows? Maybe everyone else was no good with throwing items. <laughs> I don't. You could have just shot the guy, but <laughs> that's what I like. Up until the till the big kind of face off between the gangs at the, towards the end like guns isn't really a thing for them they're all these strange melee weapons you just brought I'm glad yeah, you there's it. great use of ninja stars the ninja yes. stars the ninja stars and I, I again i love that like mall ninja interpretation of gangs where it's like they got nunchucks they got shuriken they got blunt mm. objects this is what it's like to be in a gang you have you have you have ninja weapons you bought at the mall and you're walking around town with them in your belt loop. Yeah. And if you see a guy over there, he's getting a shuriken in his shoulder. Like I love that interpretation <laughs> of gang life. It's like oh. what it's like what nineties like suburbanite parents would picture like their kid got in the gang. He's going out on the mm-hmm. streets getting in a turf fight, you know? <laughs> yep. Buying you're right. That's always at the fair. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like Get your switch blade. That sell knives and nunchucks and ninja star <laughs> yeah i mean that that's a version of gang life where i'm like okay i could see how you get swept up in this it's quite exciting yeah, yeah. catching out with ninja stars nunchucks like not a bad life no yeah. i mean a- your throat gets ripped out but <laughs> we'll get <laughs> yeah. there we'll get to that throat ripping <laughs> yeah oh my god hell of a um yeah so then the big heist and now of course in goose's absence uh, the two gangs have, have called a truce and merged. So they're all fighting on the same side. But of course, the leader, former leader of the Spiders, um, Goose knows deep down in his in his soul that th- these are the people who targeted his girlfriend. And that's why she's dead. So as soon as he sees the uh, the leader of the Spiders kind of waltz in with this shit eating on his face, he it's like he snaps out of his drug fueled days all of a sudden. He's he, he's alert and he's he's trying to strangle this man and kill him immediately. But he's constantly being pulled back by his former, his former gang members, his former peers who don't believe. Nobody believes him, which is which is a shame. I don't think it seems yeah. that unreasonable that your girlfriend was murdered with golf clubs. It was probably the gangsters that don't like you very much. Although I guess nobody knows because he did throw her in a trash bag. That's true. That is true. <laughs> and also, it's like, yeah, got killed with golf clubs, and Bone Crusher continually has the golf club like right here. It's like I wonder <laughs> who did it. He can also was. never never can shut up about it either. He loves talking about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> His brand yeah. is murder. But they're, but they're totally everybody. Big guys. Yeah, just hates. He doesn't give a shit about anything. Uh, awesome. They're planning the heist, which I was like, okay, now this, at least this, I get the motivation here. You know, fighting over the cemetery is one thing. Uh, now they're going to rob an armored car. They're going to steal $100,000. Uh, what these guys would do with the hundred thousand dollars, I'm not so sure. But they're going to get that money, and they're going to do something with it. So Goose has to help plan them out, plan it out. All the while, he know, he knows he just keeps getting in those confrontations with with the spiders and Bone Crusher specifically because he just knows Bone Crusher like pulls a snake out of nowhere, <laughs> starts mocking him with it. Yeah, uh, like tensions are running real high. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of good karate kicks, by the way, yeah. too. From Goose, like I don't I think you call that like an. I, I'm trying to remember back to my karate days. It was it's either like an axe kick or a crescent kick. I think it's a crescent kick. Loves busting out the crescent kicks, um, which does kind of again. It doesn't feel like a vanity project, but it does give it that kind of that like B movie like Seagal, you know, uh, Van Dam flavor. Seagal like, wishes he was Jim Van Beber. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Can't yeah. do shit. Yeah. I mean, y'all say this. At least he never, um, never did this to the point of like self embarrassment. Like somebody like Seagal, you know, who just yeah. keeps doing it and like, you know, it's just meme to death. Like, Van Bever got in. He, he he showed everybody what he had, and then he's just kind of kept a low profile ever since. So, I don't know who's got the stronger legacy. I don't know. I don't we'll know. see. Time will tell. Time will tell. Time and- will tell. And hopefully we haven't seen the last uh, Van Bever film of all time either. Hopefully he does get to put something he's else still, to production. 
he's in stuff. I, I you know, I've, I'll browse his IMDb and he's like in local productions in like Ohio and other independent stuff as a cast member. So he must keep busy somehow. Yeah. The obvious escalation of this is somehow we have to get Jim Van Beber on this show as a fellow, yeah. as fellow mm-hmm. Ohioans. We've got to get that him on here somehow. I am I friends thought- with him on Facebook. So maybe oh, we'll run okay. across this. Yeah. Okay. He's I was just about to say. Me. Yeah. So, I mean. I, just, I was just about to say, I bet he's not on social media anywhere. And I'm immediately proving wrong. So, perfect. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've never said anything to him or that, you know, I'm not going to flood his DMs. Like, I love your movies because I'm sure he gets it all the time. But, Jim, right. if you somehow are watching this, you know, let's make it happen. Get at us. Yeah. Let's talk about this some more. Would love to. What a, what a fascinating person that'd be to talk to. Um, so they're getting ready for the gang war. Um, and I'm trying to think here, make sure I don't miss anything great. Um, they, they're plotting it out. They execute it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm yeah, no, his, his confrontation with bone crush and everybody always comes after the heist. So, yep. The high scene itself is also great. Um, terrible, terrible work on part of the armored truck drivers and security. They really blow oh, this. Awful. <laughs> awful. They really blow this to like a very DIY operation. It's not like, you know, these well-skilled mercenaries came in and took them out. <laughs> they just <laughs> jump them. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yeah. Michael Mann, right? It's like these weirdos <laughs> who one of was repelling from a parking garage for some mm-hmm. reason. <laughs> I mean, it's the element of surprise. You don't expect to get hit by a, a ninja star in that moment. And you get a, yeah. I don't even think it's a ninja star. It's a, some bigger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a great scene, a great ambush. And again, I just love this, this film's interpretation of gang violence. Um, they succeed really quickly. They very yeah. easily overpower the like two guys in the van. Um, and they get the money, except the, the, spiders kind of haul ass out of there and they leave the ravens behind they get the full take which already you know should be ringing alarm bells for the ravens but oh, everybody yeah. but goose is just going with the flow goose is the only one who sees the potential problem here yeah like the, just shocking the scent of a setup <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so they're they're building so up to this see. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this meeting of Okay, we're gonna go over there. They got the hundred thousand dollars. They're gonna give us our cut. It's all peaceful. It's, we're all friends, so nobody bring any weapons. We're going. Nobody goes in strap. But Goose knows. He's like, okay, real quick. Let me put on all my shuriken. Let me get my nunchucks. Let me get my guns, my yeah. knives. I'm loading up and just throws a jacket over it like it's mm-hmm. no big thing, and goes to the. They all go collectively to the most disgusting, shitty, weird party <laughs> you oh, could ever imagine. It. We're just, uh, just just a naked woman is just dancing around. It, it's, There's like hardcore porn on the walls, just plastered yeah, there, <laughs> like hardcore. I'm a little like, wow, that's in that, on Blu-ray. It's pretty clear what's happening in those images now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the 4K remaster gives you all everything you want to see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's also a. Shout out to the graffiti in this because every scene yeah. is just bathed in graffiti, which yeah. many of it is like referential to the film. So it's not like that was just there. Mm-hmm. It was like, no, everywhere, again, the, the, the mayhem that must have followed this shoot because everywhere they go, they're like, all right, everything needs to be tagged in graffiti, yep. broken glass everywhere, just smear shit mm-hmm. on the walls. Like we need to make every, <laughs> everywhere we go needs to be as gross as possible. And it's right here too. There's graffiti that's, some of it's like, I remember one just, it says, fuck you, goose. So again, yeah. not, a, not a great nurturing environment for goose to go in if you're trying no. to make amends. No. Um, and then, of course, I, I don't know if we mentioned it explicitly, that they're they're secretly plotting that goose is death the whole time because goose is supposed to be dead anyway. He was supposed to die mm-hmm. with his yeah. girlfriend and bone crusher totally dropped the ball. He like didn't, he didn't have his like calendar written out correctly and just <laughs> completely miscalculated where he was going to be. Yeah. And, and like they don't realize Goose is still around till like it seems what reads to me like months later, where the leader's yeah. like, Oh, are you shitting me, Bone Crusher? You said you handled it. I trusted you, Bone Crusher. He assaults him. Um, and that's where you, where you get Bone Crusher talking about like, oh, her her intestines look like snakes. 
and, and even the leader of the spiders is like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, no, even he's a bit of taken back. Like you, you're enjoying this too much. Yeah, I might have to cut you loose. <laughs> I know it was my idea, and I sucker punched the woman I impregnated a few scenes ago. But you're, <laughs> this is unacceptable, Bone Crusher. Good lord. Here yeah. together. We have what more. Damn it. Don't talk about have some sort of, Yeah, have some sort of professionalism at least. Shit. <laughs> um, yeah. So they made it this big kind of a uh, truce meeting. Everything's going great. They're listening to fun music. Random girls just dancing around naked. There's like two burnouts on the ground having this like conversation about what would happen if you were invisible. <laughs> oh, yeah, because he. Because he repeats himself, he says like, and then you you drop acid, man, and then they cut back. And he say, it's like the same line reading. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's yeah, like, it's almost right, so. So I take acid, and he's like, no, it's like you took acid. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just just the perfect like two burnouts in the corner at a party conversation where it's just like mm -hmm. there's no there's nothing coherent about it. You're yeah, just and, like, and one of those guys ends up being like a a git. Uh, getaway driver. Oh, was he? I thought they really? both get killed here. I th I thought they both ate it in the scene. Maybe it was before the party. He was the getaway driver, but when they, when they got out like acid in the in the sunglasses, he's their <laughs> getaway driver, and I was just like, oh, "That's a poor choice." <laughs> I mean, this dude just clearly not all there. His brain is trying to like drive a car and get you the safety. <laughs> well, he's good at what he does. They do they do get away. You know, yeah. they they get yeah. away from the armored car heist. They leave behind all the people they don't like. It's pretty it's a pretty big success on their part. Everything's going pretty well for the spiders except for Goose. They really are having trouble accounting for Goose still being around, which by the way, I just love saying that name. Fucking Goose. <laughs> Goose, what a killer. Goose. Uh, so the scene goes about as well as anybody could think. You know, everybody, all the ravens show up without weapons. All right, cool. We're best friends. Give me the money. Nope. Just pulls the heel turn on, throws the cigarette at him. Lock and load, boys. And everybody just starts firing. But Goose is ready. Mm -hmm. He knows. He just, but he throws, he, he, he throws a knife into a guy's head. He goes full yes. Rambo, right? Because it's, it's the guy shooting the machine gun. He knifes him in the head. Because then he does this epic fall off of, giant pipe yeah <laughs> meanwhile all this you're just getting random shots of like limbs getting blown off and like yeah. next is gushing with blood uh, yeah it's great. so it's such a like visceral violence it's it's it, it it's mm -hmm. it's perfect <laughs> it's it, again it's totally effective uh goose gets the fuck out of dodge <clears throat> if i recall correctly is yeah. this where is this where he goes to because he's because it's not like he gets out, and that same day, everything's resolved, and like he kind of wanders off, right? Yeah, yeah. And he, that's um, when he goes to the convenience store. Oh, yeah, he, yes. he like gets through the like the toxic slush river, um, and then yeah. mm. makes his way to a like drive-through convenience store. Um, Never just, seen that. Just to get some beer. Is that so? Yeah. Is that a? Is that an Ohio thing? Because I can think of a drive-through convenience store. Yeah, there's a lot. Right yeah, there's one like right down. Like, there's plenty around here of just like drive-through convenience stores. You can drive through, get you know, alcohol, tea, whatever you want. Interesting. Yeah, yeah I don't. I I I never thought about it before. If that was something that anyone else yeah, did, I, but we, it's a tradition we maintain to this day. Yeah, yeah, I have never seen a drive-through convenience store in Michigan hmm. or any of the other states I've been to. So, like, I always thought it was just some weird thing that like he had in his town. I didn't know that it was just that must be just Ohio thing, I an Ohio thing. That is yeah. actually really cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> Way to go, guys! You did it. Like, <laughs> like fifty years ago, some guy just decided, like, I want to get, I want to get some chips and a beer, but I don't want to get out of my car. I don't have to get out of my car. You bring the cigarettes in here. I mean, the it's, it's a genius idea. I don't want to get out of my car. Yeah. I love it, doing it. Really kind of ahead of its time where you consider where we're it at. It takes the convenience to a whole nother level. Yes. Yeah. 
keep keep great for social distancing. Yes, you know. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> the safest way to get uh, um, Arizona green tea or or, <laughs> or, or a, a gigantic bag of, of combos. Yeah, a single can of Budweiser <laughs> or, or a loose <laughs> cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> One cigarette. Uh, uh, the scene in this drive-through convenience store is amazing because it's mm -hmm. like to me it, it's it solidifies that. It's not like oh the, the these guys live on the outskirts and like their world is crazy. It's like no everybody in the world of this film is a maniac. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, even even the the elderly. Get your gun, Grandma. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I go, go on, Connor. I know you've got it. I think. <laughs> Get the money! Look, it's a robbery. Give me your gun, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your gun, Grandma. <laughs> Shoot uh, him through the head. Uh, and also worth mentioning, you know, if you didn't see it uh, so quickly right there, is that Goose does not kill the, the man working in the store. It's the dumbass in the car yeah. Yeah, trying to shoot Goose is the one who ends up murdering the convenience store clerk. Uh, I just it's the that the movie has like that, like almost a sense of humor with stuff like that. Oh yeah. Like, like even at the end when there's the random road worker who just gets totaled too, like this is just mindless destruction at yeah, this point. Everybody like, woke up in Dayton on this day and chose violence. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> everybody was like, yeah. I'm probably gonna murder someone today. Yeah, yeah. Or if not be murdered. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna be murder adjacent one way or another. Whatever yeah. I gotta yeah. do. I'm gonna I'm gonna cash in on this thing everybody's doing. Um, yeah, so he, he, he flees the convenience store. Uh, I feel like there's one. Oh, and that's when he makes the call. He's just on a real spree here. He makes the call to his girlfriend, uh, Christie's sister. Mm -hmm. Um, and does a very, as soon as he did this, I was like, what are you doing? He, this person he's never talked to before. And he's in the middle of being hunted down by murderers. And he's like, I want, come here. <laughs> <laughs> Come here and meet me for the first time ever, and like a, on the outskirts of town. Bye. Like what? Are, I was like goose. This is not. I know you're losing blood. I know you're stressed yeah. out. You're probably going through withdrawal. But you could have. You should have thought about this plan a little bit longer than. Come here. Come to where I'm at. Like you go there if you have to. Why is she, why is she coming here? <laughs> well, there's a manhunt yeah. out for you. And Grandma's even got the taste of blood. Like. <laughs> Like no one should ever come here. Are you out of your mind? No. But I mean, she but, doesn't. Yeah. She's just like, okay, I'll meet you there in one hour. No big deal. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. No idea who he is because she's estranged from her sister. Yeah. Yeah. It's like set up at the beginning where Chrissy was like, "Yeah, I haven't really talked to my sister in a very long time." Yeah, since I ran away from home back a year and a half ago. Got it. Yeah, so, Thank you. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But she's willing to meet up with this random guy. No idea who he is. Hasn't talked to her sister in a while. Yeah. Because I, I don't know if yeah. we mentioned that Goose gets away from the meeting with the full bag of cash. He gets all yeah. one hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars in the in the burlap sack. You can almost see like still the money pay for his up. up. That was one thing that <laughs> bothered me. He's got that sack of cash and he won't take out like a a, I don't know what pop cost in the 80s, probably less than a buck. But yeah, probably yeah. like 20 cents for a can of whatever he was drinking. I thought it was yeah. a beer, but maybe it was 7 Up. Might have been a might have been a beer brand that I hadn't noticed, but I thought it was like a green red can. Oh. So I assumed like 7 Up. Yeah, it looked like a looked like a good old soda pop to me. You oh, can't really good. see too deeply. Although am I I've watched a lot of stuff in the last day or so. Am I wrong? Or is there like a lot of unintentional like Pepsi product placement in this? Did you see like a lot um, of Pepsi? There, might have been. There, there was because like in the bar there were like Pepsi cups. I remember. Uh, yeah. And yeah. then in the uh, convenience store, like you're saying, there were Pepsi branded machines. I yeah. think it's just like coincidental. You know, it's no, just again. Pepsi, just... I think Pepsi Co cut him a check. Oh, you yeah, think Pepsi so? Was like yes. <laughs> And then they he, saw the movie, and then they said, "You're getting one drive-in theater for thirty years." <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. They they put that put that in the in the small print at the bottom of the contract. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he calls her out to come meet him because that's his, his grandmaster plan is I'm gonna at least to honor my dead ex girlfriend's uh, memory, I can give her sister the cash so she can ride off into the sunset. Um, mm. But very terribly uh, plans this out. Has her coming into basically exactly where he's being hunted down. And so the two the two things coincide. Um, I think he he faces off with Bone Crusher first, though, right? Bone Crusher. Yeah, because it's on the top of the roof. Yes. Yeah. A amazing battle scene and an amazing death scene. Yeah. Uh, because Bone, Bone Crusher, you know, he's not the architect of everything that's happened here. He's definitely the the means to which. All this mm -hmm. it's waffles is really meowing up a storm over there. Is that waffles? <laughs> Let's go, bud. <laughs> he was yeah, just bring him in. yelling at me. Yeah, no he, he, he just bring him in. He just hear fucking what he bossed up into this room, screaming at me. Fucking <laughs> mammoth. There he is. Yeah. Right, yeah. We, we love yeah, you. Need our a guy. Man. All right, our thick king. We love to see him. <laughs> Official mascot. <laughs> Basically, he just kind of wiggle his way into more, more episodes than yeah. not. Um, you know, you're born to be a star. It's just the truth. <laughs> Bone Crusher gets his head blasted off by a car. Do I remember this correctly? <laughs> he gets thrown yes. off the bridge, lands on like an overpass, and then just well, gets. You, you guys are skipping ahead because he gets. Sorry, sorry. So it's a, it's a regular fight, then it's a uh, throwing star to the head. Oh, yeah. And then it sticks out of his head as he continues to fight. And then Goose <laughs> takes his head and smashes it a solid, like, 12 times against <laughs> the concrete wall. And blood starts to dr trickle out of the back of his head. Then he gets thrown off the bridge. <laughs> then he gets run over and decapitated. <laughs> the escalation. The, the, yeah. the punishment fits the crime. This is the way you yeah. want to see a villain die in a movie. No, yeah. it, it is. You want to just... it. It's it's a cartoon how much it keeps yeah. going. Yeah. And you want that. Yeah. Especially by that point in the movie. You're already strapped in and it it has you. Yeah. It, it's very cathartic to see him go in this way because Bone Crusher, again, not a not a character with a lot of nuance to him. Not mm -hmm. not somebody who you're like, I can not somebody who you're like, I wonder how he got this way. You know, you're like, I, I think mm -hmm. I could see the 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 <laughs> somewhere underneath there, I can still see uh the good in him. It's now he he lives for this shit, so it's There's like none. you'd love to see him get shurikened, thrown off a roof, and decapitated yes. by a car. Yes. That's how yes. the punishment fits the crime, you know. Totally, so, Goose is awful, but he at least has a couple of redeeming moments, and like he he does like make a few decisions that show okay, he cares a little bit more. Like the topless dancing girl, like before everything goes to shit, he's like, hey, get the fuck out, you know. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. like, that's a nice thing that he did. Yeah. yeah, like I'm about to start stabbing people to death. You might want to leave. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want any part of this lady. Um, really? Yeah, he takes care of Bone Crusher, but the the head the head of the gang is still out here, and this is right about when Christie's sister decides to just conveniently drive drive through. Never, mm -hmm. never, um, never meet family and plan a gang fight in the same location. You want to keep those two things separate whenever you can. Yeah. I guess Goose maybe just knows. He's like, I'm not going to make it out of this alive. I can't really guarantee I can I can make any follow-up appointments to this day. So mm. I just kind of need to consolidate them right here uh, for sake of ease. Get every get yeah. everything in one place. Um, this is his ultimatum. He's got no other choice. Yeah. 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 But, but it still immediately proves to be a bad idea. Because her car gets hijacked by uh, I can't. I wish I could remember the name. This is the thing. You Danny. need a good gang name. You need to be Goose or Bone Crusher. I won't mm -hmm. remember your name. Um, Just Danny. It is Danny. Okay. I think so. You. And that's an interesting choice too. Where you're like, I'm not gonna pick a name. I'm just gonna be Danny. And like, you're gonna you're gonna respect me so much that I don't even have to think of a pseudonym. You're just like, Danny, don't fuck around. You know, we don't even hear it. Goose is real. For all intents and purposes, Goose Goose's name is Goose. Yeah. I, it's on a maybe it was. Maybe I misheard something, but I thought at one point someone called Goose Kevin. Oh, so I don't really? know if that I don't know if that was like some slip up or if I misheard something, but I, I could have sworn a gang member called him Kevin at one point. Or maybe okay. that gang member was yelling at another gang member named Kevin. 
That's that's yeah. also entirely possible. It's also, you're in a gang and your name's Kevin. It, well, that's kind of why it stuck out because it wasn't a word like fuck or shit or some nasty. It was Kevin. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, Christy's sister's car gets hijacked by Danny right away. Mm -hmm. you know, Goose is hot on his heels. And we have this, you know, she's still in the car. Danny's driving and Goose tries to prevent this from happening. When he just gets ends up getting stuck in the window yep. while he drives. This is like, this to me was the, this is like the, this is what you show people to sell them on the film. This is like the, yeah. the true culmination. This is the, the big, the big main event that you're building up to. Like, what an amazing stunt way to end this film with him just hanging out through, of the fucking car. And he goes through like an alleyway and yeah. like, Gins his right. arm. Right. And while this happened, it cuts back into the car and Christy is just, or Christy's sister is just punching Danny in the fucking sack. <laughs> I was yeah. yelling. It just cuts it to us like on the floor of the car, just repeatedly yeah. punching Danny right in the balls. Uh, it's just, it's mayhem. It's just fucking, and there's, but there's mm -hmm. an art form in that. To be able yeah. to so oh, yeah. succinctly capture that chaos and film it and cut it in a way that you can watch it and comprehend it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All there the is moving art form and and nut punching. Yeah. Absolutely. Because yeah. it, it's you're cutting in the car. Again, she's she's giving him the big sack tap in there. Meanwhile, Goose is hanging out of the car. They drive down an alley and he's just he's getting scraped up against the brick wall. You just yeah. see his arm get that, that was again like oh my and it made me go like man I never really seen it anything like that before yeah which is mm -hmm. which is rare for me to say but I find myself continuously saying it on this new incarnation of the show where I'm constantly seeing things I haven't seen before so I love I love that we're coming to these films for the first time but this the set piece is is amazing and so gross and so gruesome just so much blood uh, they, they they the car finally crashes and. And Christie's, she must have a name too. Chris, uh, I don't know, but I, I don't I have it. I think it started. With, I think it's Stacy. Started with an S. Stacey it may not have been Stacy, but it was an S name because there's there's a like a split second close up of her writing her name. Um, I do remember that at one point. It's it's very early on, and it's like there's a lot of just split second cuts in the movie that help with the frenetic, you know, insanity going on. But, we can uh, we can roll with Stacy for sake of yeah. these. I, I'm, I'm fine yeah. with that. There really is no name. Yeah, the only S name I it got is, is it's Stubby. really it's really just Christy's sister. Huh. Oh, that's what she's credited as is Christy's sister. Okay. I guess we're correcting that then. <laughs> so Christy's sister. Yeah. Christy's sister gets out of the car, and now this is it. The final showdown, the confrontation between Goose mm -hmm. and Danny. And oh my God, this is because because one would expect like after all this, you know, Goose just gets the upper hand and it's a done deal. But Goose gets nope. rocked in the scene. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, not only does he get his arm all torn up, but then he gets um, when he gets stabbed. Yeah, that oh. that's a wince moment for me yeah. because again, it's like in movies they always portray a stab as like a very easy thing. But I'm always every time I see it, I'm like, again, never been stabbed. Can guarantee it is absolute pain, un like an incomprehensible pain, and it's just over and over and over. It's just, yeah. uh, and it, it's, it's so, terror. yeah. It's it's the like, it's that there are so many of them, and that they happen so rapidly. It just makes it feel much more realistic. It, you know, it feels mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have the like dramatic weight that a movie usually assigned to it. It's just such a like quick act. You know, there, mm -hmm. it, it's there's no, it, it's not played for drama. It's just gross and in your face, and you see every single time it goes in. And Goose again, just like wailing. You just hear the the pain. Everyone oh, goes yeah. in in this movie. No one just and shakes I mean, it off and keeps yeah. going. They're just screaming and crying as they're being mutilated all throughout the by, movie. By this point of the movie, too, Chrissy's sister is just screaming. Yeah, for like yeah. most of the soundtrack at this point, because she is like a 19 year old girl, just horrified at everything. Yeah, Ugh. yeah, and also covered in other people's blood at this point too. Which yeah, 
you, you can only kind of gather that she's had a probably a relatively very normal life up to this moment. Yeah. <laughs> she's unlike the old lady in the in the drive through. I don't feel like she's she waiting. has. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She doesn't quite she's have waiting for someone to test her. That old yeah. lady. Her her sister doesn't have that. Although after this, who knows? Maybe this is their introduction into the hard knocks of Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. But she she's like the only one who comes in with who doesn't who isn't immediately like loving the idea of killing or living amongst killing. She's covered in all the blood. Um, Goose, despite being so mutilated, does manage to get the upper hand. And this and the way he finally deals with Danny is I mm. I did watch this movie twice. I watched it again today, and I caught that that he totally sets this up. He tells Danny earlier in the film, I'm going to rip your fucking throat out. Yes. Yeah. He does. And this, that, this whole, like when he says it at the beginning and then um, the end, when he finally does it, it reminded me so much of MacGruber. And I wonder if they were inspired by this. Cause in MacGruber the whole time he tells Van Kunth with a TH at the end. Um, oh. He keeps, he tells him in every scene I'm going he ends any meeting with um, the villain. I'm going to rip your fucking throat out. He's like, and I'm going to rip your fucking throat out. <laughs> and then like it, it goes on for the whole hour and a half. And then at the end, he finally rips the throat out. <laughs> and he says it like 20 times. He's like, I'm going to rip your fucking throat out. And, uh, and what does Goose do in this, in this scene, Connor? I don't know. Let's go ahead and take a look. Content warning, it's about to get gruesome. <laughs> he rips his fucking throat out. <laughs> yep. Shows it him for a split second. You can see him holding his throat. <laughs> Which like is so perplexing. Because Jacob, like you, who has never been stabbed, I myself never have ripped a man's throat <laughs> out. But I, I imagine, That's good. It, I imagine it's not this easy. He, make, he makes it look like it, it makes it look like he, it's something easy to do. He just gets in there with his bare hand because I don't believe anything's really happened to Danny's throat prior to this. It's not like he got no. shot or cut or something like that. He just goes in, plunges the hand in, and rips that throat out like it's no big deal. It made, he made me think like I could probably do that, you know? Yeah. He just goes right in, just pulls yeah. it out. How tough is human skin, really? Like, I don't know. I've never tested. <laughs> I, 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 I guess if you're just pissed off enough, and like, I mean, if you're a goose, you can do it. Yeah, yeah. Goose can goose can do anything. He can rappel off a roof. He can do a karate kick. He can mm -hmm. rip throw it nunchucks. out. Nunchucks. Nunchucks. He can throw you in the trash compactor. Uh, he's he's a hell mm -hmm. of a soldier. Uh, he he does. I you know he's so pissed, and I guess maybe at this point he's just. He's just seeing such pure red and like accepting of like, well, I'm not going home after this. There's no reality. Mm -hmm. in which I'm going to move and I'm going to go back to school. Like that, That's not happening after this day. This is the last yeah, There's no I'm picking up the alive. pieces. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is, this is it. So just channel all that into this like Hulk out moment where you rip Danny's throat. And again, it feels cathartic to see such a irredeemable monster of a person just get manhandled like that. Mm -hmm. Get him come up it's in, a, in a, such a brutal way. Again, no real romanticism to it. You know, it's just no glamour in it. It's just fucking gross and bloody and visceral. And, and even though he's the bad guy, I just think she's going, like, oh my God. Yeah. I've never seen that before. He just ripped his, his throat out with his bare hands like it was nothing. Amazing. An amazing way to defeat the villain. And then finally, I guess this is Goose's redemption. He's like, Thinking if anything good comes out of this, uh, Christy's sister, here's a hundred thousand dollars stolen money. <laughs> he he right. tells her it's stolen and to get away. He's like, it's stolen, leave right now. Which I can see, like I can see like Goose's logic and think I'm like, this is a good thing to do. But also, she had nothing to do with any of this, and you've now implicated her in an insane number of crimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not only the robbery, but the murder spree. <laughs> Dozens of dead people that surround it. It's covered in blood. She's covered in blood. Her car is left at the scene of the crime. It's totaled. It's covered in blood. There's two dead guys next to it. It's like, I just don't know that this film ends with her run, running all the way home and like never having to work again in her life because she puts all that money in the bank. It's, I don't know. I don't know, Goose. 
if this if this ended how you thought it did but i guess he gets to die with some uh some peace maybe feeling like he's mm-hmm. he's he's, he's, he's given all of this violence and mayhem some sort of purpose, purpose. yeah yeah if, if i can get if i can approve one person's life out of this then it has a little bit of meaning i don't it know how be. improved it is yeah I, I think there's if you just like yeah. cut to one week later a lot of people asking Christy's sister a lot of questions. Ah. <laughs> so your your car was at the scene of a heinous crime. Um, two a man missing a throat. Yeah, one's missing yeah. a throat, another one's skinned alive. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yesterday, of blood. they're suspected to steal a uh, hundred thousand dollars from an armored truck earlier that day. Uh, <laughs> You want to tell us why your car is there? Yeah, yeah. You know, I know I'm sure she got a pretty clean record, but it's gonna be hard. I, I you know, I guess you could explain it all like I don't know. Guy called me, I, I got I showed up, gave me this money, like you can have it back, I guess. You know, uh, I, I guess you can talk to me. Just tell him the yeah. truth. She is basically yeah. innocent. Uh <laughs> and that's it. That's she that that culminates. That's dead yeah. being at dawn. And it, it ends and then, very, very quickly. Just yep. boom, right to get yep. credit. Goose walks down the street, falls, dies. Dies. What more do you want? Yep. <laughs> what a hell of a movie. I uh yeah. Like I said at the start of this, I'd never seen Dead Beat It Done. And I really don't know, had we not done this, I don't know if I ever would have found this film. It, it's it's possible, but I, I wasn't familiar mm-hmm. with the filmmaker. I wasn't familiar, I haven't I haven't seen his Manson. Uh, is Manson family film, which I think is maybe what he's more uh, renowned for or known for. Mm-hmm. I would love to watch it after this. Like, you tell me, oh, this guy has another movie that he made. Like, oh my god, I gotta watch that. You know, I guess that one's more violent somehow. Oh. <laughs> I, I yeah, I don't know. I don't you know have to see it, but I guess it's even more offensive. But glad you guys yeah. really enjoyed the film. Yeah, yeah. This, this is a blast. So far, we've had a lot of variety. And what we've watched and I, I we've not talked about like we, we've been doing this for almost a year now we've not talked about anything like this at length on the show here before so what what a treat what a treat to uh watch deadbeat at dawn thank you so much david for bringing of it course to us. is a treat for me to be on i love talking about it it's, a, <laughs> it's great to shoot the shit yeah yeah this this film really my only kind of regret with this film was that i watched it by myself this is totally a film that lends mm-hmm. itself to yeah. like getting people together, yep. having a couple of drinks and just going buck wild, just like hooting and hollering while you watch yeah. this. It's just, you know, there's, there's stuff to laugh at. There's stuff to just cheer for. Mm-hmm. It's just such an experience. That's kind of my only regret is that, you know, I watched it by myself, but get the great experience of talking about it at length here. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely one of those movies you get together and, and have a few drinks and then, just recite these batshit crazy lines. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I'll carry this with me now. You know when 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 the when the world pieces itself back together and we can start doing that of like bringing people together, watching movies, like show it. Like oh man, have you ever seen this? No, okay, let me mm-hmm. throw it on real quick. Like like this is that kind of movie, and I, oh, totally. I gotta feel that I'll run into many people in life who probably have not seen Deadbeat at Dawn before. And mm-hmm. so I, I can see myself watching this many more times in my life. So I, I, I'm, I feel like I've been, I've been blessed <laughs> with this film, you know, this is something I can, it, I can take with me and share. Um, oh yeah. it, it is a real blessing of a film. The fact that it exists is just so remarkable pieced together yeah. by like a palpable determination. <laughs> like you can just feel the whole time. Like nobody wanted uh, James Van Bever to make this movie, but he did. And damn it. It's all that matters. Yeah. And he, and he did I've it. only ever given one perfect five star review on this channel before. Oh my Not god. Anymore. This is five stars. Wow. I oh fucking love this yes. music. It's a five star for me, but <laughs> hell yeah. Insane. It's so much fun. Um, yeah, five stars. Five oh, ninja stars. Ninja <laughs> stars. That's yeah. beautiful. I wouldn't even know how to like compare this to any other, like if you were creating like a universal rubric for like, how do I rate films? I wouldn't even know how to compare this to other movies. It's so, (laughs) it's so distinct. Uh, But like I said earlier, I think it's, it's succeeding in every way that it wants to. 
and it's making me feel the way that I'm supposed to while I watch it. And that's not easy to do. That's, that's I think, one of the biggest challenges a filmmaker can face. So, hell yeah. If, if I'm like, I want to watch a grindhousey, dirty, rotten movie mm-hmm. with blood that's just like morally bankrupt, this is it, baby. So, Five mm-hmm. Sherry can go in right into Bone Crusher's fucking temple. Gotta love hell it. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. What a great movie. Um, is there anything else? I don't want to cut it off too short. Is there anything else we want to say about Deadbeat at Dawn? Anything that we didn't we didn't get to? Um, I mean, we went through the whole thing. I feel pretty good about it. I'm just looking through if I got anything else. Okay, I wanted to bring this up actually real quick. The yeah. tagline of the movie makes no sense. <laughs> have you have you like read what it is? It yeah. goes, he, he quit they, the gangs, they killed his girl, so he became deadbeat at dawn i'm like i'm not i don't get what that means <laughs> like how do you become deadbeat at dawn he's already like, what he was already deadbeat yeah exactly and like what's the at dawn of it like <laughs> yeah they never really i i just assumed it's like dead by morning like that's kind of what that means like you'd be dead by the am but for the tagline yeah. it just makes no effing sense hopefully my yeah, dog it- doesn't He's barking his head off. <laughs> it's all right. As, as you've surely discovered, pets make cameos on this. It, it, oh, yeah. it's, it's it's the nature of this kind of thing. Um, yeah. yeah, no, you're, that's a great point because it's not like he's got his shit together in a big way and then his girlfriend dies and it's like, oh, I've got to drop everything and hit rock bottom and become a monster. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, he's kind of doing his thing start to finish. Yeah, he was <laughs> already think there. About- yeah. <laughs> Deadbeat just- forever. It, it's one of those where I can just see because, like, you know, taglines are normally made by not the filmmaker. So yeah. I could just see it. Some guy, advertiser, didn't see the movie, just like, eh, just slap this on there. Yeah. <laughs> it's called what? I don't know. He became <laughs> yeah, exactly. dog. I'm sure that makes sense. <laughs> like, I'm watch not watching it. Them. Watch it. What are you fucking crazy? I gotta watch this trash. <laughs> I got kids yeah. to feed. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, this this film's wonderful. I can't recommend it enough. You know, obviously, I, I think I'm always, I'm always prefacing stuff with like, uh, oh, it, it's not for everybody. But at the same time, anybody who would want to listen to this show, I feel like it's got to be for you. Like, I can't okay. imagine you're like, yeah, I don't vibe with that. No, it's it's gross. It's dirty. Uh, it, it's, it's raw. It's unapologetic and like morally bankrupt. And if that sounds like mm-hmm. something you can you can you can hide inside for an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, this is the film for you. So go check it out on Shutter or to or get the the Arrow release, the Blu-ray, because I think it, I think they did do like truly like a 4K remaster, right? Yeah, a uh, 2K. It just says 2K. here, brand new 2K restoration, approved by Van Weber himself. So Perfect. they probably had to ask him for the negatives. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Gotta get him out of the garage and send him over. Yeah, uh, yeah, great, great. Yeah. love it, love Arrow, dude. Doing doing God's work, bringing these oh, movies yeah. back to people who would never see them otherwise. So, go find a copy one way or another. Um, we we definitely recommend it. I'm really scared. Um, next week, don't forget we're coming back. Of course, live Thursday night for our final show of January. We'll be talking about House on Haunted Hill on the 28th, the uh, William Castle classic starring Vincent Price uh, with horror writer and critic Angela Benson. Can't wait to have her on. This will be the first film of the month where I'm like, yeah, hey, I've seen that before. So I'll, I'm excited to come back to it and talk about it like, because again, a, a legendary film, a lot of and, a lot of uh, legacy coming with that. So hopefully we can do yeah. it justice. Can't wait to have Angela on, talk about that. Um, and of course, we'll also be unveiling our February calendar. Uh, Which we've been working is on that. Special. Awesome. It's a banger. Yeah, we got... Four more movies to talk about and a lot of amazing guests. I can't wait to uh, I can't wait to announce that. We've got a lot of great stuff coming up in February. Love it. Um, Jacob, once again, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Of course. Tonight. Thank you, guys. Uh, had a ton of could fun. You, could you tell all the great ghouls and goblins out there where they can find you and where they can find your film one more time? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram at Horn Jacob and at uh, Twitter at Horn Jacob One. There's a digit at the end. And then I would much rather prefer if you follow Neutrals, which is my short film, at Neutrals Film on Instagram and uh, Facebook. Get all the details about where to see the movie. 
I mean, I, I don't think I'm going out on a limb saying if you like Deadbeat at Dawn, you would also probably enjoy Neutrals. There's yeah. a lot of similarities in it with the, the vulgarity of language and, you know, <laughs> tone and kind of dirtiness. So, yeah, at Neutrals Film uh, and at Horn Jacob. So thanks again, guys. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for exposing us to Deadbeat at Dawn. I'm and, glad. The more, the better. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yes, there are dozens of us. Um, <laughs> thank you to everybody who watched tonight, or if you listen after the mm -hmm. fact, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, make sure you, you follow us on the on the Twitches and the YouTubes and the Facebooks and such. Uh, leave us a little cute review. Leave us a little cutie. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We'll see you next week for House on Haunted Hill. Good night, guys. Have a good one. Stay spooky. See you.